How do you taper your antidepressant and your benzodiazepine? There are various different methods out there which you may have heard about. We have the Ashton manual, which is very popular in the benzodiazepine space. We have the taper by 10% of the last dose. That's called exponential tapering. That's very popular in the Symbolta community and the antidepressant community. And then recently we've had hyperbolic tapering. And so I'm briefly gonna kind of describe what all of these methods are and then let you know how I think about it and how I think is the best way to guide people on doing this. In the earlier publications of the Ashton method, it's quite a linear taper. They just say, you know, if you're on 20 of Valium, just drop by, you know, one milligram or two milligrams every week down to zero. In later publication, she talks about slowing it down towards the end, which I think makes a lot of sense. Then you have, you know, I kind of described it before, the 10% of the last dose or 5% of the last dose method. If you're on 20 milligrams of Valium or 20 milligrams of fluoxetine or something like that, you would just, you know, what's 10% of 20? So that's um, two. So you'd go down to 18 milligrams and then the next drop you would do 10% of 18, which would be my next drop is going to be 1.8, so on and so forth the whole way down. And then hyperbolic tapering, to me, it seems sort of more theoretical because it's based on receptor occupancy. So it's like, how does the occupancy of that drug on that receptor change at the different doses? And in general, what they saw was that when someone was on a much higher dose of the drug and they lowered it, they could lower it substantially and they would not really change receptor occupancy that much. So for instance, you might go from, let's say 60 milligrams of Prozac to 40 milligrams of Prozac. And maybe you only change like receptor occupancy from like, I don't know, 80 to like 70% or something like that. And what they find when you get really low down, you know, you could go from like, two milligrams to like one milligram of Prozac, but that jump might change receptor binding by 10%. And so the general idea in hyperbolic tapering is that you can be more aggressive in your dose reductions at the start and then kind of slow it down. So how do you know which one to pick here? So I'd say the most conservative one is 10% of the last dose and then probably hyperbolic tapering and then the Ashton method or linear tapering. Here's kind of what I like to do because you kind of take a little bit from all of these things is I think it's always makes sense to start cutting anywhere between 5% and 10% of the last dose. And then you really wanna follow these general principles. And what they are is level of functioning. So every time I'm doing a dose reduction for one of my patients, I make sure that I firmly establish a level of functioning. And this is okay if you're in protracted withdrawal and you're already severely debilitated by this, you still have a baseline and you still have things you can do. And so when I make that drop, I make sure that I check in with them in the next couple of weeks and I say, you know, were you still able to maintain your level of functioning? And if they say yes, you know, it was uncomfortable, but I was still able to cook for my family, pick my kids up from the store and, and things like pick my kids up from school, then I keep it at that rate and we keep on going. But if they say that I can't do the things I normally can do, I slow it down. I go, okay, now I might reinstate at that previous dose if they're really sick. But if they kind of make it through that, I say, all right, that reduction was too much. So if we were tapering at 10%, now we're going to be tapering at 5%. And I do that same thing where I'm assessing it based on their level of functioning. And I kind of go down like that. The next thing that you want to be aware of when you're doing this is the time between the cuts. Now I say that anywhere from between two and four weeks is probably good. I wouldn't taper anyone if you're doing cut and hold any faster than two weeks. And so usually, I like people to be back at their baseline for about seven days before I'm going to do another reduction. And that's essentially how I adjust it. You know, if someone does a cut and they're saying, oh, I, I still don't feel quite right. I'm not back at my baseline. And that takes them 21 days. I had another seven days. That person's cutting every month. You know, if someone cuts and then four days later, they're doing pretty good. I go, okay, this person's going to be on a two week cutting schedule because I'm not going to go any faster than two weeks. If you follow those general principles of listening to your body, you will end up kind of coming down at the right rate. And really over time, that kind of approximates what all of these schedules are anyway. It typically is that people can cut a lot more aggressively at the start if they're on high doses and they have to slow it way down as you get to the end. A little addition I wanna add here is that there's something called the liquid micro taper or the, the dry micro taper. Now what this is, is it's different from cut and hold where you're doing reductions every two to four weeks. With these micro tapers, you might do a reduction every day or maybe every three days. And so why would you complicate your life by doing a micro taper. The issue is that sometimes people are so sensitive, you know, they might start their cut at 10%, 
and that's too fast. It causes a lot of symptoms and they're not able to function at their previous level. They go to 5%, the same thing happens, they go to 2%. And now they're like cutting at such small increments and they're still having notable worsening in their symptoms. That's when I say, we need to divide that, say that 2% reduction or that 5% reduction. Instead of giving it all to a person in a single day, we are now gonna divide that over like 30 days. And so for that individual, you might say, okay, they're on 20 of Prozac, we wanna go down to 80 18, we're gonna to go to 19, we're gonna do a 5% reduction. You would take one milligram and you would divide that one milligram by 30 and that would be the amount that you would reduce by each day as you go. Theoretically and in my experience, that can be a lot smoother for some people as they come down off that medication. It can seem really complicated doing the math. If you'd like someone to help you with that, you could come over to our website and we do this every day if you wanna have a consultation with us. And so that's when I would recommend that you transition to something more complicated like a liquid micro taper or dry cut micro taper. That is my general overview of uh, how you'd go about tapering antidepressants or benzodiazepines. Mm -hmm.